due tipi particolari di senso di colpa, di interessantissime implicazioni, sia per la comprensione della psicopatologia, in particolare del disturbo ossessivo compulsivo, sia per la possibilità di individuare dei correlati neurali diversi, nei due diversi tipi di, di senso di colpa. Purtroppo ognuno di noi avrà, e il professor Grazia alla fine ci farà la discussione, purtroppo ognuno di noi avrà poco tempo, 10 minuti e un quarto d'ora a testa, faremo del nostro meglio, sperando di lasciare qualche minuto anche per le nostre domande. E direi di cominciare dalla Marcia Bush. I'm very happy to be here, and I will talk about guilt of control and mastery perspective. And those of you who are interested in control and mastery theories, please come to our we have a week-long workshop in March in San Francisco, and I would like all of you to come. Control mastery theory has uh, it focuses on the guilt of children develop about their normal adaptive strategies because they begin to feel that they are hurting their parents or their siblings by just progressing their, their development. So children can develop to about there are certain kinds of guilt that, you, that control mastery theory normally talks about. Um, separation guilt, um, survivor guilt, I think label self evident um, and omnipotent responsibility guilt, uh, which involves feeling overly powerful and overly responsible um, for people who you have strong attachments to. The, the essence of guilt is to have empathy for the pain of somebody else and to feel that you've been a cause of that pain. And it's, it's a very painful emotion. Um, conscious guilt becomes intolerable. It, it always has to be either defended against or addressed in some way. Um, there's been an interesting series of studies in recent years on the guilt that soldiers feel when they find out. It's often retrospective guilt. They find out that the enemy they thought they were killing was actually a group of children. That type of thing. Um, and it can be, they call it moral injury. That if you're going to, for normal people, if you're going to commit a violent act, you have to feel justified. And basic training provides you with the justification in the way the enemy is framed. Um, they try to have you cut off your empathy. Um, they homogenize the enemy. But it's never completely, it's not totally effective. And those soldiers who have killed other people, whether they're enemy combatants or innocent people, are at much higher risk of suicide. Um, following their color duty in the military. So it is a really important issue in people's lives. 
and even more so in children's lives. Um, and in reaction to the young children they feel towards their parents, they will sacrifice any aspect of their development. Um, it can be very extreme. They'll give up their reality testing, they'll give up their sense of self. I have patients who felt so obliged to be with their family wanted or needed that when they have their own children, they don't feel that their children are their own. They feel that their children actually block their parents. So it wrecks habit with people's lives. And it's normally unconscious. Um, if you are aware, as an adult, if you commit some act of injury to someone else, it depends on, I think, how much integrity you have as a person. If you have a lot of integrity, you take responsibility for it. And you try to make amends in any way you can. Um, the military has developed therapies for soldiers who suffer from moral injury that really involves making amends, seeking forgiveness, um, being able to share their guilt in a group with other soldiers. All these things are very important. And it's equally true in therapy. Um, our theory of guilt is it's very different from Freud's. There's one point of agreement between the co mastery theory and psychoanalytic theory, which is that guilt is silent, it creates incredible, incredibly painful problems for people, but they're not aware that their suffering is produced by unconscious guilt. Um, and that they can really produce what we call the negative therapeutic reaction, that somebody will not get better even in very good treatment. In terms of the kind of guilt children have and the ways in which therapists can be helpful, they actually believe they have committed crimes against their parents, or they will if they try to pursue their goals. So the most important thing from a therapeutic point of view, both with children and with adults, is to convey that their goals are reasonable, they are healthy, and they should pursue them. There's nothing wrong with that. Freud considered guilt irrational because he thought it was based on a person's fantasies, not on their actions. Um, control mastery theory considers guilt irrational because it's based on either an exaggerated sense of harm kids feel they've caused their parents, or because the parents have made very unreasonable demands that the child does not recognize as such, so that the child complies with those demands and is very guilty about 
his or her wishes. Um, to grow up, to form relationships, to follow up, um, to develop their abilities. So that it's a whole, it's a very different model of guilt. It's not, if you feel guilty, there must be a good reason why. Which is what's commonly, it's a common thought in popular culture and certainly in psychoanalysis. Um, but that's not true. Um, people who come to therapists for therapy, they suffer from unconscious guilt without being aware of it. And they also suffer from conscious guilt um, without being aware that it's unjustified. And they will spend their whole lives working on overcoming the, the kind of guilt feelings that they have. Um, Okay, I'm going to wrap it. The research hasn't been done and needs to be done. Francesco started on this line. Is I'm trying to assess a person, the difference between a person's conscious will and a person's unconscious will. And it's important to uh, um, try to figure out as a therapist why someone's guilt has become unconscious. Um, it's certainly guilt is an intolerable emotion. You can't endure it for very long. But there's some beginning research that's been done in Australia on the neural correlates of guilt. Um, there's a psychologist, what's his name?